He's your one already. It's okay, find me, Karen. Yeah, find him. Okay, uh, hi everybody. So my name is Aaron. So I'll be talking on this topic, which is uh, feasibility, correlates, and validity of one leg sit to stand tests in an individual's following ACL recon. So quite a le lengthy uh, title, so I've tried not to repeat it too much. Uh, yeah. So uh, fun fact about me, um, previously I was watching, uh, working in a restructured hospital before moving out to private. So here I am, uh, I just joined Heartland Rehab this year as well. So previously I was also a uh, unit's best batchmate and colleague as well. Yeah, so we work together. So some of the specialization of some of my common interests will be in uh, post-op knee rehab, hence my thesis as well, and my uh, publisher, uh, publish of the paper. Yeah, so uh, this is just a brief overview, so I'm not gonna bore you all too much on it. So I'll just be running through on the background of it, the introduction, the aims, and of course the methodology of all the research paper that was published as well, and of course the discussion and the conclusion of it. Yeah, so in fact, actually, uh, this is my thesis paper from SIT actually. So uh, in fact, this is not my paper that was published. So this was what I was doing in, in my year four thesis program. But then after collaboration with SGH, we decided to publish the paper, which is in the next picture. So yeah, so uh, this paper was published in 2021. We did the research through 2019 to 2020. Yeah, so uh, these are some of the pictures uh, just to share with you all. This is, uh, if you all are not familiar or have not been to this place, this is actually the SGH gym in Outram Community Hospital Level 4. So it's quite a big place and this is uh, me just taking pictures of my day. Uh, this was after the thesis program was completed already. So this was me going back to SGH to help out. And uh, yes, this is me celebrating the last day where I just submitted my thesis. Yeah, next. Okay, so introduction on the paper, which is the feasibility and correlates one. So uh, here's the overview of it. So as we all know, uh, core strength is very important for ACL rehab. It's actually one of the most important things and we oftentimes will test it quite regularly. So um, it affects uh, the, our athletes, our people who have injured their ACL in terms of their running, jumping ability. So it's very important for us to keep track of this. So of course, um, if you are to head to the hospital, of course, like what we'll usually see is that they'll do an isotonic knee extension machine, usually called the Cybex. We'll be going through uh, a series of tests also in the hospital. But of course, if let's say you're like in, coming to see us in Heartland Rehab, you'll be using the Kim Van, which is the portable handheld dynamometer. Yeah. So fun fact about this study was actually when it was done in 2021 or during the period of 2019 to 2021, it was done also because of the fact that COVID-19 just hit us. So when COVID-19 first hit us, uh, we, a lot of patients were unable to head to the hospital to do all of these testing because it was considered non-essential. So when it's non-essential, um, a lot of them were unable to track their progression of the ACL rehab. So therefore, um, our TC set off to find out actually, can we use other forms of method to measure? Instead of use, relying on a Cybex machine, instead of using the dynamometer, we would like to find out whether the one leg seat to stand test can overcome the barrier of accessibility because of the COVID-19 yeah, situation. So, all in all, this study aimed to examine the feasibility of using this one leg seat to stand test in a home setting. So the correlation of one leg seat to stand test as well, in terms of its relation to the knee range of motions, the quad strength, the return to sport capabilities as well, and of course, the last one will be one leg seat to stand to regards to running and jumping performance. Yeah. So we recruited 20 patients. So these 20 patients were undergoing rehab with SGH hospital currently. So um, uh, most of the patients actually were male. So there are about 12 male patients, eight female patients where they were recruited. Um, inclusion and exclusion criteria were quite extensive. Exclusion criteria included those that were having bilateral ACL issues or they had gone through another contralateral site of operation as well for their knee. Yep. So as you all can see on the picture over here, so usually the, this is the main test that usually that we will do uh, with our patients currently as well. So one of the Melbourne ACL protocol states that we should do 10 uh, seat to stand together for, from a 46 cm chair height. That's one of the qualifying criteria in the Melbourne ACL. But back then in 2019, when the Melbourne ACL guide was not really fully established yet, because it was established in 2021, our suggestion was to use this method to just track their progression in ACL rehab. Yeah. So in terms of the results, I think this is the more interesting one, is that we want to look at the differences between the one leg sit to stand in the involved and uninvolved side. So I place a 
black arrow over there just for people to just zone in onto the mark. So you can see at the six month mark and the one year follow up. In the six month mark, there was actually just a, the patients were only capable of doing 10.3 one leg sit to stand for the involved side, which is the operated side. For the unoperated side, actually they can do up to 13.5. Yeah, so try to remember these values first because later on I'll be sharing one other study towards the end of the paper that is relatable to what my results are in this paper. So, uh, back in, yeah. so it, as we can see in the one year mark, as they progress through, they are doing more exercises, they clear their whatever, the return to sport criteria, we can see that the results improved to 12.4 for the involved side in terms of one leg sit to stand when we, we call them and get them to do the test again. Yeah. So in these two tables as well, these are the other variables because that's just, in table one, that was just the results. But in table two, this was the correlation of the one leg sit to stand performance with the outcome measures that we wanted to compare it to as well. So um, the, uh, you can see the blue two arrows over there. That's where we can see the p-value is 0 0.01, uh, which means that it's correlated. Um, so the one RM score, which is the quad strength, was very related to the one leg single uh, sit to stand, as well as the return to sport, where they are doing a survey for, for it. So these two are the main things that were very correlated um, to the test itself. So in table 3 as well, we can see that in terms of like the correlation between the one leg sit to stand to self-reported measures of running and jumping, um, we also the p-value is, uh, is less than 0 0.01 and less than 0 0.01. So it means that it's very correlated. So actually the one leg sit to stand test is actually a very good measure and indication in terms of their progress in rehab. So in this discussion, so um, all in all through the results, uh, we can see that the self-assessment of one leg sit to stand was very feasible. Um, there's a lot of convergent validity with the one leg sit to stand to quad strength. Um, it's equipment free, that's the most important thing, which means that we can conduct this anytime, anywhere. Although, of course, we know that using a Cybex machine, using a portable dynamometer such as the Kinvent machine will produce accurate results. In the case where, let's say, the patient is unable to leave the house, or let's say they are unable to access to any of our facilities, we can still use this as a backup measure to measure their rehab progression, whether it's suitable for them to actually progress on forward in their rehab. Yep. Okay, so following on like what I mentioned, it shows a strong and mo a moderate to strong validity with re running and jumping difficulty. So um, it can, like what I mentioned earlier, it can guide clinicians in rehab in terms of transition to return to sport. So as we can see in the Melbourne ACL protocol, and of course a lot of the protocols out there in the ACL world uh, by Mick Hughes as well, they are using a one leg seat to stand as a qualifying criteria to return to jogging alongside of the strength measure of 70% RSI as well. Yeah, so all in all, to conclude, um, although the test is, ver is, is valid as of right now, when it was done back in 2021, there would, needs to be a broader validation of it because number one is our patient pool was 20 only. So in terms of when we use the Spearman correlation, we actually needed a pool of 160 patients to make it valid. So at that point of time, because of the COVID, COVID situation, we couldn't recruit enough to qualify them for the 160 patients. Yeah, but later on, uh, in my last slide, you will see a, another, another study that was done. Yeah, so um, in this paper, which is a 2023 paper, uh, University of Melbourne as well as La Trobe University actually follow up on our study that was conducted in 2021 as well. This time, they, they recruited 100 patients. So um, they actually used the same outcome measures, which is the one RM strength measure. Then of course, the same thing with ACL patients and they conducted whether patients could do one leg sit to stand. But of course, when they recruited this patient, so some of the measures were also a bit different. They recruited patients from nine months to 36 months post-op rehab. Yeah, so in terms of their performance wise, they, con they were doing it a little bit better as well. But the key number in this study is 13.6. So they could actually do sit to stand 13.6 times, which is not very far from my study, which is 12.4, which shows that there is validity and comparison between the two values as well, or the two papers. Yeah. Okay, uh, I come to the end of thing. I think it's a very worthy, it's quite uh, intense because it's a case study that was published. So any further questions no, later on? It was on? very, very informative. It was really, really good. Okay, any questions out there? Seriously. If there's no questions, I've got a very, very important announcement to make later on. Okay, all good? All right, let's give another big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just put it on the table. Yeah, put it. Thank you. Okay, I've got a very, very important announcement to make right now. 
Time check. It is 8.30. Approximately 